we are continuing Laura's lessons and today we are going to be making our very own tornado. This one is safe and it is with leftover things that you have in your house. Any bottle will work. So all you need is to get this bottle. Get some water. Fill it up. Uh, around about two thirds of the way full, just a little over halfway to be good. Um, make sure that you get somebody to help you. Maybe do it over a sink. Isn't perhaps the best way of doing it. Ah. Uh, and then you'll also need washing up liquid, some glitter, and if you have it, some food dye. Okay, that's nearly just over halfway. There we go. I'm going to put in, oh, there we go, a good dollop of washing up liquid. That's gone in there. Going to grab my food colouring. I've got blue, but you can put in any one that you want and put in, there we go. This just helps this experiment to be seen a little more easily. And then finally, and you don't have to do this, but it will make it look pretty and easier to see the liquid moving around. Glitter. So I'm going to pour some glitter. Pour <laughs> quite a lot more. You don't have too much glitter. There we go. And all I'm going to do is put the lid on, screw it tight, <laughs> really tight. Can you see in there? We've got the um, food coloring at the bottom, the glitter moving all the way through. And then you turn the bottle upside down and you spin it. And you spin and spin and spin and spin. And this is just like in the atmosphere when you have your horizontal wind shear that turns into the vertical wind shear around that axis. And then it starts to rotate. And this is exactly what happened in a tornado. This air swirling round and round and round and round. And you can see all the little bits of glitter in it. And that's what happens when things like twigs and branches, even cars are picked up and flung through the skies. But I have a second experiment for you because there is a very cool thing that you can do to create tornadoes with not one, but two plastic bottles. So you follow the steps from before, you fill up this to over halfway with water, you then put in some washing up liquid, add some food colouring, add some glitter to help you see the liquid more easily. And then you get your second bottle and oops, you put it on top and then you just sellotape it. I might need to just grab a tea towel. Okay, I haven't got a tea towel. <laughs> I've got one of Charlotte's bibs. <laughs> That's gonna have to do. Drying this. And then turn it upside down. Put it on top. It is unfortunate that I don't have a helper because I think I may need this. You then need to put on tape as tight as you can and seal the two together. There actually are online these things called tornado connectors. You can get something that can connect two bottles together. Um, I guess because this experiment is done a lot. <laughs> I haven't done this. This is it. So I'm hoping that this will work. Sealing this together. Oh my goodness, I'm a bit worried that this. So what we're going to do is just use this just like an egg timer. Turn it upside down, give it a spin, and then we should see a tornado develop. Right, I'm gonna call that a day. Also gonna move the computer back just a little. <laughs> so this is part of our Laura's lessons to make your own tornado. So I'm looking at the monitor, by the way, I'm just checking this is all gonna go okay. <laughs> I'm so nervous, I'm gonna get water everywhere. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna turn it upside down. Hope I don't get water everywhere. Okay, and we're gonna give it a spin. 
And there we go. We have our vortex. Okay, not too much water came out. I think next time I probably would put a little more water in so this whole experience lasts a lot longer. But with the glitter inside and with the coloured food dye and with the washing up liquid, you get to see the swirling of the water. So I'm going to turn it upside down, start spinning. Spin, spin, spin. And you slowly but surely start to see a vortex happening. I promise you would. <laughs> also for the fact that I've probably shaken it out too much and added a lot of washing up liquid. So see if you can create your own tornado in a bottle, either with one bottle upside down or with two and spinning it like a um, spinning it around to create that vortex like we do in a tornado, just like you can see here, looking very much like an egg timer. So send them in using the hashtag Laura's Lessons and the very best of luck to you. And maybe it doesn't always go wrong, but try and try again. I just would like to say, um, I don't really condone single-use plastic bottles. We got these especially for this experiment and a previous one that I've done, but any bottle will work. So Laura's lesson for now is all about tornadoes. Uh, severe weather, you'll have heard about them, seen pictures of them, you may well have even seen one yourself. It's a narrow rotating column of air that brings exceptionally strong winds down to the surface. Now, in America, that's where most people see tornadoes, there are storm chasers who go out and chase them all the time, and their tornado season runs its way from March to June, but it actually, they can have tornadoes at any time of year. So, I'm gonna look at how tornadoes are formed, how they dissipate, some fun facts about them as well. So, storms are what you need. So you need thunderstorms to be around, to be developing. And with that, your first stage is you need storm development. And one of the most important things for these storms to develop is the geography of the land and also then getting the rotation. So that's why in the central plains of America where it gets exceptionally hot, that is where they see some of the most frequent and most active tornadoes in the world. So step one, Storm development, you need the sun to heat the ground. When the ground heats, the air starts to rise. As it rises, the air condenses and it forms a cloud. The more and more it rises, the more one column of air goes up and updraft. It creates a bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger cloud until it gets to the very top of the atmosphere. That is when it spreads out and causes that big anvil cloud. So a towering cumulus or a cumulus nimbus cloud is then born. That is when you see those thermals rising up. And then when it cools, starts to cool aloft, that is when you get these big, big thunderstorm clouds. So one, a storm has developed. Two, you then need the storm to become organized. Now this occurs when you have winds increasing with height. So at the surface, they may not be that strong, but the higher up you get through the atmosphere, they get stronger and stronger and stronger. And it's this strong winds right at the top that start to cause the rotation and the rotation and eventually comes from the horizontal to the vertical around that central axis. And then we start to see this rotation and the more persistent the rotation, the deeper the rotation, that is when we see these tornadoes, these supercells developing in the sky. But the tornado isn't born yet. It is still in its formation stage. So number three is how does a tornado form? Well, it forms when you start to see a downdraft in the tornado. So the air's been going up, warm air, warm air, going up, up, up. So you then start to see this downdraft coming down, the cool air descends, and then that helps to concentrate the rotation and bring it all the way down to lower levels. Now, eventually, in some cases, the rotation that's been going on round and round and round becomes so strong that it causes a narrow funnel of air all the way down to the surface. And at the moment it touches the ground, that is when a tornado is formed. Many people will see these funnel clouds in the sky spinning around and around and around, but it's not until it actually touches the ground that it is officially a tornado. And then when it's reached the ground, it can start to pick up the debris because of the strength of the winds. And it's that as well that starts to make it much, much more visible. Uh, tornadoes can last for a long time. They can last for a short amount of time. They can last for a amount of uh, minutes to hours. They can be meters across to miles across. They are incredibly powerful, forceful parts of nature that cause huge parts of destruction as they move their way through. Tornadoes dissipate when we start to see 
cool dry down drafts. So when the cool down drafts are stronger than the up drafts, then they start to narrow, 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 narrow. The column of air that touches the ground slowly starts to pull away and then the tornado is over. So they are the four stages of tornado formation. And now some fun facts about tornadoes. The tornado that has traveled the furthest was an astonishing 219 miles in America, in the state of Princeton, 18th of March in 1924. The most tornadoes that have ever been seen in 24 hours, 175, and that was from the 27th to 28th of April in 2011, again in America. The state that sees the most on average in a year in America is Texas with 155 tornadoes. Uh, and the month that seen the most was April 2011, 817 in just one month again in the United States of America. The most has been seen in one year, this is astonishing, in America again, 2004, 1,820 tornadoes in just one year. The winds, we know that they are so strong they can rip up houses, throw them across the sky, pull down trees, pull down cower cables, move cars like they're just toy trucks. It's impossible to measure exactly the strength of the winds in a tornado. There are storm chasers who fire things into the centre of them to try and figure out the wind speeds, look at the rotation, and they do get measurements. But the strongest wind that has ever been recorded is 302 miles an hour, 302 miles an hour. That is apparently the strongest wind that has ever been recorded on the surface of the earth. The tornado season runs from March to June, but a really interesting fact, because we see these tornadoes, we see them in America, we see the storm chasers, but actually, the country in the world that sees the most tornadoes per area is right here in the UK. Yes, yeah, so in the UK, per area, per square meter, we see more tornadoes than any other country on Earth, even America, that's because it's really focused through those central and southern states. So, in particularly the summer months when you see big shower clouds developing, going up and up and up, if you start to see the winds rotating and the moment it touches the ground, that is when a tornado is born. But if you have to wait that long, it could be a long time. Uh, in the meantime, you can make your very own tornado. So don't forget to send those pictures in of your homemade tornadoes to us at Good Morning Britain using the hashtag Laura's Lessons. Good luck.